Hi everyone, it is Monday evening. It looks like I got a shadow going on here. Anyway, how's everyone doing this fine Monday? Um, kind of hot today here in sunny Orlando. Um, been a while, it's been getting chilly. I think we're gonna get like cold weather again next week. But yeah, let's get the weather out the way. Um, so the last time I was on here, um, I was doing, uh, well, I think it was like 25 stuff about me. And I touched on um, about meeting my mom at eight and my dad at around 15 or 16 years old. And then I would come back on here and share a little bit more details on it. And I was racking my head on how to start out talking about it. Um, and I don't want it to come across in like a sad way because it's a, just an interesting story that happens every day. It's happening now. It's been happening for decades and um, it is what it is, right? So this is how it um, started out. And let me see where I can start. Starting on, well, first of all, um, I grew up with my great grandmother that I can remember. It was my great grandmother. So it was between her and my grandmother in Jamaica. And we would see like, we would get stuff um, like in a barrel. We'd always have um, clothing sent to us and things that we needed, new shoes and, you know, stuff like that. And we'd always be like so excited, especially around Christmas time. We just knew stuff was coming and you kind of hear people talking. So we knew it was coming from somewhere. I don't remember ever hearing the word, your mom sent this for you. Okay. Just that it was coming from somewhere and it was exciting to get it. It was like a lot of stuff. So then it was around, I was around eight. And this was in around January of 1972 that um, I was at my grandma. Well, first between all that, I was sent, me and my sisters were sent to like a boarding school, they call it, to live. Um, I guess my mom took us from my grandmother and my great-grandmother in San Estor boarding school. Um, as people were talking, how we're just running all over the place. We're like six and five years old. We were climbing trees. We were having fun. And I guess there was some jealousy with neighbors and stuff. So they were like, you know, writing my mom's letters saying, oh, the kids are just, you know, they're just going here and going there. You know, these little children and stuff like that. But I can remember we were having lots of fun. That was like my best childhood years I can remember. Um, my grandmother had this piece of land, my great-grandmother, where she lived and stuff. You know, kids, we're going to be going through the, the the gate and go playing with children and stuff and going over people's yard and everything. So my mother didn't like that. Sent us to a boarding school, and that boarding school was more or less just sending us to a lady that was not married and that she had a grown daughter and lived with her mom and that she was willing to take children in, that their parents wanted them to teach them how to eat with a knife and a fork, etiquette, and all of this stuff, because that's what the lady did. You had to get up on time. Everything was strict, 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 like by the book. We weren't running all over the place anymore having fun. We were just, it was just really strict. <laughs> so, um, then I remember my great grandmother coming and getting us, and then next thing I know, there I could hear they say like your mom is coming. I'm like okay, I was like eight years old. Your mom is coming, so then I first met her, and I gotta tell you, I don't know what it was, but I was afraid of her. Okay, I was afraid of her. I remember just having this fear, okay, over me of her. So short. Long story short, um, the reason why I got to meet her at eight is because um, she was the only daughter from my grandmother. My grandmother had four sons and the one girl. And apparently, um, she expected more of my mom not to have children and to just go to a nursing school, okay? And my mom didn't do that. She met my dad. And um, they weren't married or anything like that when she had me and my two sisters. Um, on top of it, my dad hadn't told her that he 
was living with someone else at the time. And to make it bad, I mean, he literally, um, um, you know, I won't even go into that, but he more or less ended up marrying that person while he was having kids with my mom because um, apparently the kind of job he was doing to get a promotion, he had to be married. Um, so he married a person that he was living in the house with, okay? I don't know how all that went down, but that's what happened, okay? Um, and I just hear some stories from my half-sisters about my mom knocking at her mom door and be like, I'm here for the milk money and for the kids. I don't know what my father was. Milk money for the kids. Let's put it this way. It meant child support, <laughs> but they called it the milk money for the kids, okay? So, um, anyway... He went to Nassau, and apparently he sent a letter from my mom. Um, I don't know what was happening with his relationship with um, his, his wife that he married after, um, but he sent a letter from my mom to come and join him with us, okay? And... My grandmother intercepted the letter, threw it away, probably burnt it, and um, sent my mother in an airplane to the Bahamas instead. And so my mom went to the Bahamas, um, never got to hear from my, because she didn't know where he was, okay? Um, he went there, because um, he was in the construction, real estate and stuff. Um, so then um, my mom remarried, well, she got married, and had two more children um, at the time when she came to get us. And then we had my, my, her third child with my stepfather. Um, so there's a total of six of us. Um, after, was it after she came? Yeah. Wait a minute. Was it after? Yeah, after she came and got us, she had my brother. Um, so my last brother. So anyway, um, I'm saying a lot of, um, sorry about that. She came down and got us, and I just know I was just so afraid of her. I don't know what it was, but she was a very stern woman. I was so afraid of her. Um, and so here it is. I'm eight years old, and I am now living with my mom, who I am uh, just terrified of, okay? I don't remember what circumstances caused me to be terrified of her. I don't know if it's just coming out of, you know... Because I was around other people, but it was just something about her that terrified me. And so, you know, me and my sisters went there um, to the Bahamas. So we lived in the Bahamas and stuff. And my stepfather was a um, electrician person. So from there, we lived there, went to school in the Bahamas, Freeport, Bahamas. It was lovely. We went on the beach. I mean, my mother never had to work. Um, we would go on the beach after she picked us up from school and eat, you know, and drink coconut water. I mean, it was just lovely time. And so then they decided that they want to expand their business in the air conditioning electrician business and come to Miami. So we did that, okay? So here it is, my stepdad wanted to um, give us his name. And my mom kept saying no, and she kept telling us, I don't want to give you guys, you know, his name because you're going to meet your dad one day. And she would say all this great stuff about my father. Just she would really build him up to the point that we were like so excited. So we were like, yeah, we got our dad, you know, we're going to meet our dad, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, um, so you sometimes, you know, it would be like she would say stuff that make you feel like, like if you ask, I want me a, this doll, she'd be like, is your father going to pay for it? And, you know, stuff like that. I don't know what's going on with her. But little things like that, but no matter what she did, um, build us up, build up our dad to us, which is so important. You don't want to always destroy the other um, parent, um, like a lot of people do. And it's grown-up stuff. It has nothing to do with the children, okay? Because right now my brother is going through some stuff where his son does not even want to talk to him because his mom talked bad about him. That's just so sad, you know? Um, but... Um, 
So this is how we met my father. My stepfather, he believed in us learning business from we were children. Um, the success of being a, a business owner, uh, you know, self-employed business person, right? So he would take us in his van, the AC van, um, company van, um, to do flyers and stuff just to get us out of the house, right? My mom, she was always sleeping. I don't know. She, I think she suffered from depression. But she was always sleeping in the bed. I don't remember my mom ever being out of the bed, but when she would get out of the bed and be upset with you or something, she wanted everything to be like, you know, the way she wanted to be and stuff. So we would go, and he met this guy, this man, and apparently the man said to him, um, those three little girls, he was pointing out me and my two sisters, he was like, they're not your children. And he says, no, why do you ask? He says, because they look like family members of mine. And he knew, and, he, and I know your name is not, you know, he said our name. And my stepfather says, yeah, yeah, um, what is your name? And he told him, and he says, yeah, that's the kid's name. And he says, who's their mom? And so my stepfather says, do you want to meet her? So then they brought the gentleman, he ended up being a realtor, um, to our house. And then, you know, he met my mom. My mom says, oh, yeah, I remember, you know, she said Roy, my father's name was Roy, had a cousin, um, uh, Philip and stuff. So then he, my mom says, um, where's Roy, you know? And he says, Roy used to live like 10 blocks away from here. So my dad was living 10 blocks away from our house in Miami, which 10 blocks away would have been the neighborhood that we went to school, Okay. Uh, but now he's living in Orlando. So let me tell you, that night we got to talk to our dad. We were so excited, I swear. It was like with my, my mom, she just lit up, oh my gosh, and she was like, you guys are going to talk to your dad, and we're calling him now, and that was the only time we got to talk on the phone because I don't care if you were 16 or not in my mother's house, you do not talk on the phone because you are not grown. You don't get phone calls there. On the phone, I mean, you know, she was something else, okay? <laughs> um, so we got to talk to him. We were so excited. Oh, my God. I, I was like 16. My sister's 14. The other one was like 13. And it just had happened that it was summertime was coming up. He was there. I think it just worked out perfect. He was there like two days later, him and his wife, to pick us up. And bring us to Orlando and of course you know we went to Disney World so out of all the kids he had and with you know his uh, previous wife and stuff we got to spend more time with him because he never went back to Jamaica um, and the kids there his kids never really came up or anything like that um, so as young age, we got to bond with him more. And so we would come every summer. And of course, at 16, I'm getting to be 17, thinking about high school, you know, I'm in high school. And I'm, I think I was just about getting ready to go to high school. Yeah. I was like 15. Yeah, that's right. I was like, right in that summer, I must have just turned 16 because I was getting ready to go to high school where I would have been in um, ninth grade. Okay, um, and so that was a time where my whole world was going to be changing anyway. So I bonded a little bit with him, but I also had my own opinions of things and stuff. So I really only got to spend two summers with him um, before just, you know, going to school and stuff. Um, and then at one point later on, I think, I don't even know if I got to speak to him on a regular basis after that. Probably not, because like I said, you're turning 18 and you're ready for your life and, and stuff like that, okay? But yeah, that was the story. So we found out that my grandmother intercepted a letter um, stopping them from being together and didn't want them together, and that's why they hid while they were together. And when I mentioned about him getting married, um, 
it was weird because I think how my mom met him is through her brother because my uncle was the best man in his wedding. Can you imagine that? Um, because apparently the marriage was for him to get the position. Anyway, the way that kind of stuff that was going on back then, I don't know. I know today if that goes on, there'd be like, people don't lay down and put up with that kind of stuff. But anyway, that was that. So that's how I met them. So yeah, people will say you didn't bond then with your mother and your father. No, I didn't bond with a mother and a father. I don't know what it's like to have bonded with a mother and a father in the kind of way as when you're a little kid growing up. I bonded with my father, never bonded with my mom, but I bonded with my father um, for a short time. You know, just be happy to see him and get to know him. He had a strong presence and everything like that, you know. Um, both of them have passed away um, at a very young age. They were in their 60s when they passed away. Um, but I remember when he was passing away, my mom went and my grandmother went. We were all here. And he made a joke saying, oh, Barbara, you know, yeah, we can, you know, probably get married now. And my grandmother was like, oh, no, you're not. And oh, my God, they were like, you know, in the 60s. And she was still like, no, no, don't want y'all together. So. Um, but anyway, that's the story. Um, interesting one. Um, and it was interesting how we, oh, and my other sisters and brothers on the, on the side of, um, when he had married, um, his wife, the first wife, we get along so well. Okay. We all look alike. We literally all look alike. So because of that, that is how we found our father because this man recognized the, the stamp, I would call it, of my father's DNA and that family DNA and, and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So that's my story, you know? Um, and let me see, is there anything else that was interesting about that? Oh, then the next story I'm going to tell you is about, you know, like seeing my father again later after getting married, having the children and relocating from Miami to Orlando in 1992, right before Hurricane Andrew and finding ourselves in a position of almost living in the apartment from hell. That's why I was mentioning I'm not living in any apartment unless it's downtown and it's secured because that was my first time going to living into an apartment and it just ended up being um, something else. Um, so stay tuned for that story because that was an interesting one. A fantastic Monday. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will talk to you guys later, maybe tomorrow. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.